All right, so this is the Zima Board 832. Thank you to Zima Board and Ice Wheel for sending this out and also sponsoring the video. So let's open everything up and see what we got. We've got a SATA Y cable and we've got a USB-C to HDMI adapter. Okay, we've got our adapter here, gonna need that. So it's not USB-C powered. I, I, I just assumed it was USB-C powered. World's first hackable single board computer, is that true? I didn't know that. Whoa, okay. Zuma board user manual. Who reads documentation? I'm an end user, I don't read documentation. We got the board here. It's got some weight to it. That's a Raspberry Pi 4 I just grabbed off my shelf. And if you can't see, this is translucent. I'm gonna take the film off. We've got our two single gigabit ports, We've got two USB 3.0s, got a power jack, and what is this connector? Mini display port. I didn't know that's what mini display ports looked like. And then we have our two SATA connectors, and then the middle is the SATA indicator connector. So, okay, that's a PCIe 2.0. Oh, I see it now, yeah. Let's get it plugged in and check out the software and I am going to get my hands a little dirty. The Zima board is unlike many of its peers, as it rocks a full x86 chip instead of an ARM processor like a Raspberry Pi or Orange Pi. And if you didn't know already, going from an ARM processor to more of a desktop CPU opens up a lot more software compatibility. But that is changing, ARM is catching up. Now specifically, the Zima board uses the Intel Celeron N3450 chip, an old APU from 2016. It's an entry-level quad-core processor based on the Apollo Lake architecture. To put it in perspective, for example, some of the computers that use this chip are the Acer Aspire 1 Cloudbook series. This series was known for its affordability and portability, catering primarily to students and users looking for a very basic and low-cost laptop. When I read that it had this specific Intel Celeron chip, I knew it sounded familiar because it's the same chip in another project that I was working on, reviving this old mini PC that has the same exact chip in it that used to be my router into a steam machine. I can confirm that this chip is definitely not the most powerful I've seen, especially when it comes to gaming performance. But with all that said, this mini PC worked great as a PFSense router. It ran all my routing perfectly fine as well as a couple of lightweight server applications. Now, let's get the Zima board set up. I did need to use the mini display port to HDMI adapter to work on my monitor, and I did not have one of those adapters, so thanks again for Icewell and Zima Board for supplying me with that adapter, as well as sponsoring the video. Now, let's talk software. The Zima Board can pretty much use any Linux distro, but it ships with Casa OS. Casa OS is a lightweight Debian-based Linux distribution designed for home servers, focusing on easy management of personal cloud services and self-hosted applications through a simple interface. I've had some experience with Casa OS on my Raspberry Pi, but never with an x86 chip, so I'm interested in seeing how it performs. When we boot Casa OS, it goes straight to a command line interface. Since it doesn't have a local GUI by default, the local command line interface is still helpful for things like finding your local IP so you can access the web page for the first time, or if you lose connection to the remote GUI for some reason over your network. Of course, you can find the IP of your Zima board for the first time by just going through your router settings, but command line is faster for me. So now that we know the local IP of our Zima board, we can remove all these peripherals and get it put in our server rack. Now that we have it all racked up, let's get to installing some software. The main thing I want to test is video encoding, 720 and 1080. I'm probably not going to do much transcoding since I know the limitations of the CPU. The video app I'm going to be using is called Jellyfin. Jellyfin is open source media server software built on Linux, allowing you to organize, stream, and access your media collection from any device, making it a strong alternative to other media server software. Okay, so this is the home page that you're greeted with when you log into Casa OS for the first time. We've got our network status over here, our storage capacity over here, our system monitoring over here, and then we have our app store. This is the big one here. So these are all the apps you can kind of just click and install, but give me a little bit of time to roll my sleeves up and get my hands dirty here. I'll show you what I have when I'm done. So for our stress test, we're gonna be testing two server applications, one being Jellyfin for video encoding and another being a Minecraft server. The first Jellyfin test will be with a 720p video followed by a 1080p. So I'm gonna open up Jellyfin. We're gonna start with a 720 video first. We're encoding a 1080p video. 
we're going to play the 720 and the 1080 video at the same time. All right, so I've got the 1080p video encoding and the 720 video encoding at the same time. And we're going to play the Minecraft. But it looks like the Zemo board kind of passes the test on just kind of the basic media server essentials. Like you can encode two videos at the same time and run a Minecraft server all while just kind of chilling. CPU is just kind of chilling. The Zemo Board 832 is a great choice for people looking for a well-built plug and play platform that can easily be expanded upon with tons of available accessories thanks to its IO. Now let's go over the pros and cons. The main things I liked about it were the build quality. I love this pre-installed case and access to all the IO without needing to open up anything. The second thing isn't even really for me. It's the noob friendly plug and play nature of the Zima board that just invites new people getting into single board computers and just home server in general. It makes it really easy to get started and that's what I really appreciate about the Zima board. And that brings me to my last pro because another thing that makes this great for new people is the fact that it's using an x86 chip and not an ARM processor. That's just gonna make things even easier because there's so much more software compatibility. My two main cons about the Zima board is one, that it uses that really old chip that I mentioned from 2016. I wish they would go with something a little bit more powerful and modern. And then also the fact that it only has two one gigabit ethernet ports. So I'd say if those are the only two gripes I could find, it's doing pretty good. And I really do think the Zima board is kind of in a class of its own, but you let me know in the comments, what would you compare the Zima board to mostly? Peace. Mm -hmm.